Hi everyone, this is Blasm185 here. Happy New Year and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I will be talking about how to build a 15,000 Rand and under budget game PC in South Africa. So, let's get started. Before we start with the video, so just a standard disclaimer. In this guide, I am assuming that you already have a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and possibly a headset as well. This is just a 15,000 Rand budget game PC, so just a tower, there are like no accessories from peripherals and such. So, another note to add, I'm so sorry for not uploading any videos for a few weeks now. I was very busy in my life. Some of the things I did was like, I helped my friend upgrade his game PC to AMD Ryzen. He had like um, previously had a liquid cooled Intel i7 2700K with like 16 gigabytes of RAM, SSD in storage. Another friend of mine and I helped him purchase his new components at Computer Mania. Like it was like cheaper for him because he couldn't like you know wait for online for some reason he's like you know. You couldn't buy stuff online, so we just went to Computer Mania. That is like the cheapest place, like to buy it. And like he, we bought a AMD Ryzen 3600, 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, and a Asus Tough A520M motherboard. He kept his old case power supply, which was like a whopping 1,180 plus old PSU. So that's like incredible, hey. Sure. So, he also kept his MSI GTX um, 970 4GB GPU and such. It was like a fun board. He's enjoying his new PC now. Prices were very good for buying it at a physical store. On the other hand, I also like replaced a couple of batteries and a couple of iPhones and like revived a dead 2008 17. 17 inch MacBook Pro. I also managed to install Windows 10 32 bit on a Pentium D330 GHz packet file PC, which originally ran Windows XP with 1 GB of DDR2 667 GHz RAM. So, enough of my real life story, so let's start with the guide. So, starting the guide, you have 15,000 RAM. In your hand and you want to figure out where you can buy the best bank for buck computer there are many places in the country from online retailers such as rootware evtech takealot.com or your local places such as computer mania and the more expensive place pro connection so starting off we have the amd ryzen 5 3500x from rootware it costs 2,999 Rand. It is a 3rd generation 7 nanometer 6 core and 6 threaded Ryzen processor. It is a small and cheaper cousin of the Ryzen 5 3600. It was like a China only processor so it's quite interesting to see that we South Africans have access to such a processor when it was like only China only. Quite interesting. It has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz. It has 3 megabytes of R2 cache, 32 megabytes of R3 cache, and it supports the PCI Express version 4.0 x16 speed. So when you buy like the CPU, it comes with a stock cooler, which is the AMD Wraith um, Stealth. It is a great cooler to start out with, and also for stock as well. It comes with a three years of local warranty, so one could use also the non. X version of this processor, the 3500, if you want to cheap out slightly cheaper than 3000 Rand. But like it seems that from what I could see, it's only available in upgrade kits. However, it has like a lower L3 cache and the higher L3 cache in the X version of this processor would give you slightly better gameplay and performance theoretically however it's negligible and you might not notice it but the higher the R3 cache is usually the better so I would recommend you to go for the 3500X so next for the motherboard we have the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4AC AM480X motherboard 
I chose this motherboard as it is the cheapest full ATX B550 motherboard currently available in South Africa. It costs 79 Rand at Woodware. It's cheaper than last year's 2,599 Rand. So that's cool. The board also features built in AC Wi Fi at dual band. 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz it also has a bluetooth 4.2 which is awesome so you can use like a bluetooth headset and small bluetooth keyboard you can see in the picture the small m.2 wi-fi card which is make it wi-fi from it is a it has a good amount of and selection of heating all over the chipset and power delivery chips it has four ram slots and the board supports up to 128 gigabytes of ram it supports 3rd gen AMD, AM4 Ryzen and future AMD Ryzen processors such as the like the 5600X and above. It unfortunately does not support the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G and Ryzen 3 3200G. Like to note, the B550 boards do not support your 3400G and 3200G, like if you see any website selling like a B550 board with like those processors, it's like there's a huge chance it might not even work or not even boot. Like on some cases it might boot, right? It might work, but if you update the firmware or the BIOS, it might not even work at all. So it's very risky and I would, wouldn't recommend you just buy it because it wouldn't work. Like so just rather go for B450 if you have like a 3400G or a 3200G. Anyways, the motherboard supports PCI 4.0, meaning for any GPU with 4.0 capability, your games will run faster and the GPU will communicate to the processor at a much um, faster speed in theory as well. So if you also have a PCI 4.0 M.2 NVMe SSD, your read, write and boot times or your load up time as well will tremendously fast your speeds will be super fast it's there's no joke and with how fast you can get it the, the board also finally has a wide variety of IO as well but like since this is a B series board you can overclock your Ryzen CPU as well where with the A series board such as like the A520M or or M sense micro ATX so A520 or A320 you cannot, uh, it's not supported, whereas with this board specifically, it does support overclocking. So next for RAM, we will be choosing a 16GB dual channel kit from Bootware 4 for 1889 RAM. We get the G-Skill Rip Jaws V 16GB 2x8GB kit DDR4 3600MHz CL16 1.35 volt black desktop memory 3600 MHz is also for Ryzen and I'm sure one can also overclock the RAM as well further with the right profile and such the faster the RAM the better it is for Ryzen 3600 MHz is super fast the kit is also dual channel so it's also for Ryzen and makes the full performance much better I also chose this kit as you can reuse it when you upgrade to a newer gen of Ryzen CPUs or upgrade to a better performing Ryzen CPU in the future and it will be still as fast. If you liked this video so far, please click on that subscribe button, leave a like and comment as well. Thank you. Before we also continue further, one as an alternative can get upgrade kits from EVTEC which feature these components or something similar as well. It may be cheaper but from what I can see these kits do not include a board which has like built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so if you wanted to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth it may be more than 500 Rand extra like even up to 1000 Rand and above hey? if you want to and they will take like some of your you know USB ports and PCI slots so if you have a lot of USB devices and such it is best and recommended to use my suggested suggested components as it is much better for the future in my personal case if I were to choose well if I were to buy like 
first. I will choose my suggested components as I have a lot of USB devices such as like you know external storage, a cheap RGB mouse pad and like a drawing pad and that's like really three USB devices and you know you have your headset and you have your mouse and keyboard and everything like that. So for our GPU, the discrete GPU is the ASRock Radeon RX 5, 5500 XT Challenger D 4GB OC PCI 4.0 desktop graphics card. It has a price of 3699 Rand on Rootware. It's an awesome GPU, it has 4GB of GDR6 VRAM. It is an awesome amount for gaming and for video editing as well, for 3D rendering. It has a game clock of 1717 MHz, boost clock of 1845 MHz, and it's a second generation 7 nanometer GPU. It has like three display ports and one HDMI 2.0 port as well. It supports PCI 4.0 as well. It also has two fans, nice cooling, and a proper back plate as well. So, with regards to how much FPS you would get, there are many benchmarks on YouTube and such. So, in summary, Counter Strike Global Offensive at 1080p high settings gets you about 195 FPS on average. Fortnite at 1080p epic settings gets you about 85 FPS on average. Rainbow Six Siege gets you about 110 FPS on average at on 1080p Ultra. As this is a 4 gigabyte card, your performance may be negligible and vary. However, with the benefit of PCI Express 4.0 on the GPU, CPU, and motherboard, super fast RAM, and, a, and processor, you may not notice anything or any difference from the matter. So, with the essentials now sorted, we now look at storage, okay? We are going full SSD today. We will be getting from Rootware for 1000. 99 RAM and Mushkin Helix 500GB M.2 PC I NVMe Solid State Drive. It has a read speed of up to 2105 MB per second and a write speed of up to 1670 MB per second. The 500GB of SSD storage is a good amount to start with. For you as a gamer and a person who wants to, you know, work on the PC, and you can add an extra additional one terabyte or two terabyte hard drive in the future. Up next, we have to choose our power supply. So a golden rule in PC building is to never cheap out on the power supply. It may ruin your life in the future. Like seriously, it might destroy it completely. So with that said, I chose in this board the Super Flower LED X 650 watt 80 plus silver certified fully modular power desktop power supply. It is 80 plus silver certified. It is an awesome PSU as it's more efficient and will save you a lot of electricity and money. It costs a discounted price of 1379 Rand on It's fully modular, so you don't have a nest of cables at the corner of your game PC. 650 watt is also more than enough for this build and for GPU such as like the RX 570, 580, 5500 XT, and the GTX 1650 and 1660 Supers. I personally is I'm also using this PSU in my fam's PC as well. So that's good. Good power supply. So finally with the last component in this build it is your PC case. So in this video, I will be choosing the Cougar MX410 Mesh G RGB Mid Tower Game Case from Computer Mania. It has like a tempered glass left side pan left side panel, mesh front panel, and has a great range of I/O. Has four USBs, a hey? good, so quite good for your peripherals and some additions and stuff like that. It also includes four 120 millimeter. A RGB fans as well, which are all pre-installed, three in the front, one at the back. It has a internal fan hub as well, so to connect all the fans and the two ARGB strips to the motherboard. The power supply and the power supply to power them as well, so you plug the power supply to the fan hub and like it powers it all. So if you have a a GPU, right? So the case supports GPUs at a max length of 
270 to 300 millimeters depending on your configuration of your fans and cooler that is like um most of your two fan gpus out there three fans are unfortunately too big our astro gpu fits in the case at 241 millimeters the case costs exactly 1299 rand you can also get this on eve tech as well for the same price so but like however it costs you 99 rand in shipping with that whereas with computer mania it's 75 rand and you can even pick it up in one of the shops so coming to the end of this video, my 15,000 Rand board costs in total exactly 14,985 Rand with shipping give or take, depending on where you get your parts from. So I hope you liked this video, don't forget to click on the subscribe button for more videos like this. Leave a like and comment, thanks for watching, stay safe out there and have a great day, cheerio!